Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Ur. I use service layer Python to make API calls in my next apps. If you wonder what is this approach and how you can take advantage of it, you can keep watching. By the way, I don't say it's the best way to make API calls. It's just the practice I have been following while building full stack web applications. I mostly use Next.js for building the front end and Next.js for building the back end server. If you have any feedback regarding how we can make this flow better, please write them in the comment section. I would like to read them and improve myself as well. First of all, I use Stack React Query to manage my service states. It provides so much features like caching, optimistic updates. It gives loading, error states, etc. And probably many more features that I don't use. If you don't know what is React Query, I highly recommend you to check that out. Secondly, I use Axios. You probably know this one, but it's just a wrapper around native fetch. I like the developer experience. It provides interceptors and we can define a base URL. We can define default headers. Of course, you can create your own wrapper, but I do prefer using Axios. The, the interface they provide just feels more natural to me, but it's not necessary to use Axios to follow this approach. Uh, that's all. That's all we need. So let's take a look at the repository I have created for this video. Okay, let's take a look at the project structure that I use. First of all, I have a providers folder where I create my providers. In this case, I have just created React query providers. Just initialize a new query client and pass it to client provider and then wrap our children with this provider so that we can use React query client in our components. Secondly, maybe the most important part is the services folder. In this folder, I create new files with this naming convention. Each service will have the service name and dot, then the service and the extension of the file. Mostly these files are matching with the backend services as well. So if I have guide service in the backend, I will probably create a new service here called guide service. Let's take a look at this user service file. You will see that I create a new class user service and this class has some functions related to the endpoint. So for example, this get users is just fetching the users and the users pads. It returns the data in this format. And if we encounter any error like 404 or 500, Axios will throw an error. And in that case, I'm just returning success false data error message. And also I have a types folder where I define my response types. If you are using RPC, I think this is not necessary. In this case, I have defined my own types like this. If I go to uh, like, let's say page, what I can do is cons users data and I can call user service and get users. I think this is better than defining get users function and export it directly. So now I'm aware of this comes from a user service. Yes, I could take a look at this pad and I know where, where does it come from, but it's just the way I like actually. So I can make a wait. I can check if user data a success. If it's not successful, I can just return the message, handle the error like this. After that check, I can actually render this user's data. You see, we have all the data. This was in the server. So let's take a look at user list client. In here, I have three components, one for a loading state, it includes skeleton components. Let's refresh this page and you will see. You see the skeletons. And one for user list client, which is a client component. It's just a wrapper around the actual components. That's another thing that I like. I just wrap this actual UI component, wrap it with a client component so that this component is not rely on client side. I can render this component anywhere in my applications, whether it is a client component or a server component. And you see the simplicity of the component, right? And which brings us to the second step I will talk, the React Query part. If we take a look at page of Penstack React Query, 
you will see that they define use query inside this component, which I, do, I don't think that's the best approach, but maybe it is, I'm not sure. I'm just creating a new file for it. You will see I have this books folder, which I created use user file. If you take a look at, I have two hook, one for use get users, other one is for updating the user, but I won't talk about this in this video. If you take a look at this function, it's just the same thing that they do, but I do like having it separate folder so that we are separating the component and the hook. Of course, it can take params in the future as we have in here, update user. And then I am just returning the things that I will need in the components like this. I only need data and status, so I just return it. And if I take a look at my component, you see I have only one line of code, which does the same job with this. I can use this uh, in other components as well. I just wanted to say it just separates the concerns. You see, we get the data uh, and if status is pending, we just render the loading part. And if it's uh, successful, we render the actual data. It's just awesome. I like this uh, pattern and I did want to uh, talk with you just to see what you think about this approach. Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know in the comments. I would like to get your opinions about this, this, this server layer pattern. Yeah. Anyway, see you in the next videos. This was Ur. Take care. Bye-bye.